Hi, I'm Johnny Engineer Turmel, running in my 92nd election for the Popper Party of Ontario in the riding of Sault Ste. Marie, Provincial, Ontario. And there was a debate uh, last Tuesday night. I was invited, I was on it, and this is the headline the next day. Debate disrupted by unruly candidate. So you have to wonder, how did I disrupt the debate with such unruliness? What was the unruliness? I used two bad words. I said, what kind of idiots? And I said, people who believe this are clowns. Those are the bad words, idiots and clowns, that and caused the unruliness which disrupted the debate. So, we'll talk about these articles now. So, the first article, this is out of the Sault Ste. Marie Newt um, Star. And, uh, let me put on my glasses, I'll read it to you. Popper Party candidate John Turmel was turfed from your by-election debate Tuesday night after being warned about his behavior on two occasions. Yes, I once said, what kind of idiots? And once I said, these gotta be clowns. John Turmel will not face charges, police say. But the two-hour debate was put on hold for about 20 minutes, 25, after Turmel refused to sit down, because it was my turn to answer, and continued to argue to the audience, telling them that climate change is not real. That's stupid. I'm the one who's saying climate changes. They're the ones trying to stop it, okay? I, so it's global warming. That's what I actually said. So they, to her, it's all the same thing. Change either way or one way, it's all the same to her. <laughs> Let's see if I can. All right. Um, and that he knows best because he's a trained scientist with decades of experience. Termel called the base moderator a sweetie. She wasn't. And told the member of the audience that he didn't want her vote after she told him it was rude for him to call the audience clowns. Well, actually, I said people who believe <laughs> people who believe that this is warmer than this are clowns, right? So um, he also dropped the f bomb at one point in his rant and said he's not afraid of being arrested because he's been there before. Well, that would be the first time in my political and public career I ever used the f word in public. I wonder if they can prove it. And was it what part of the show? Uh, Turnell blamed organizers for the ruckus because they turned off his microphone prior to him receiving one of his, his one-minute allotment to answer a question. Boom! That triggered the event when they said, you can't talk no more. Oh, yeah? Instead, the microphone was shut off after Turmel called the audience clowns who believed that this is warmer than this. Turmel rose from his seat and carried on endlessly, refusing to leave the chambers of City Hall. He was booed by the public gallery, but continued on. Actually, they were busy laughing, okay? There wasn't that much booing, only from the few climate-warming clowns. Even after the cameras were turned off, and you can listen to the laughing on my video, Turmel continued his rant until police arrived. Yeah, I continued my spiel. He wants to call it a rant, fine. Off-duty police constable Sonny Spina was able to negotiate and escort Turmel out of council chambers. He said, sir, come with me. I went, certainly, <laughs> negotiate. Turmel, who was filming the events himself, removed his camera and left peacefully with police. Seven candidates are seeking the nomination. So that's the Sioux Star article next day. Now, Sue today, and they did several videos explaining the reality of what I'm talking about. Well, that's time banking and all that. Go check out those videos. Uh, police called the by-election debate. Fine. City police were called to a by-election debate at the Civic Center tonight after a candidate was asked to leave over outbursts. What kind of idiots and people who believe this are clowns? Outbursts! The Sault Ste. Marie Chamber of Commerce, Algoma University by-election candidates debate at Civic Center was suspended for about 20 minutes after candidate John Turmel of the Popper Party of Ontario was called out for conduct. Idiots and clowns. Conduct! during the debate and asked to leave. I used two bad words and that's wrong conduct. Termel, who at times shouted during his allotted time, yeah, you can hear me shout here, okay. Stentorian, I would rather use that word instead of shouting or yelling. Loud is fine. Um, during his allotted time during the first half of the debate, 
was called out by moderator Monica Dale. She's the clown who didn't get anything, smallest one in the room, after calling participants clowns for believing in global warming and referring to global warming as a hoax. Okay, so Sue Today got it right. I was knocking global warming, not climate change. I think people who want to stop climate from changing are stupid. The generation who tried to stop the climate from changing. <laughs> Termel called it an excuse to tax the population. The Popper Party candidate who's running 91 elections was asked to leave by the aid organizers, but declined until police were called. Following the final outburst, that was the word clowns, okay. Dale informed Termel he had lost his opportunity to speak. Isn't that sad that I have to take my opportunity anyway, Termel responded, continuing to deliver his speech. When approached by Chamber CEO Rory Ring, he's the clown you'll see keeps coming up and giving me, you know, static. Rory Ring, Termel pulled away saying, you can't touch me, go get a cop with a badge and a gun. Get your hands off of me. And I said, get out of here. <laughs> the debate was suspended while Sault Ste. Police, Sioux police were called to the scene and Termel was escorted from the building by officers. He left peacefully when police arrived. Police said no charges have been laid. Candidates were warned prior to the beginning of the debate that unacceptable language could result in them being asked to leave. And it happened. My unacceptable use of the phrase, what kind of idiots would, and people who believe this bunk are clowns, yes sir, resulted in my being asked to leave. Unacceptable language, deemed unacceptable by a clown who's an idiot, the lady moderator who couldn't stay with the graph. Ah, but maybe she didn't see it, I wasn't pointing at much at her. Last article, it's called, what do you remember from the televised debate? Uh, Craig Huckerberry, and this is Suta. Sue Online. Okay. Chances are people have turned in to watch the final debate for the Sioux St. Marie by election Tuesday night. Probably only remember of one of the candidates who caused a ruckus in council chambers. <gasps> Used two bad words, caused a ruckus. Mind you, once they triggered the event, then the ruckus went on. I agree. John Turmel, representing the Popper Party, began yelling at the panel stentorially and audience gathered at the Civic Center in the first hour of the debate. Remember, I'm talking to an audience. They shut my mic. So that's why they can call it yelling, okay? If I'd spoken quietly without a mic, no one would have heard me, right? So I'm yelling. The debate candidate would not sit down after many warnings by the moderator to sit down. Turnell was talking about climate change and the untruths about it. Well, no, I believe in climate change, you know? I oppose the idiots trying to stop it from changing. At one point, Termel called the audience clowns who believe that this is warmer than this. They always leave out the qualifier built into that insult and drop the F-bomb as well. They must have talked together, these reporters. Well, I wish you'd tell me when. So first in my career, Termel said he knows this because he's a trained scientist. The moderator rejected him from the debate. His microphone was shut off and police were called to escort the candidate out of the building. The televised debate by Shaw took a 20-minute recess and then it continued. So, those are the articles and that's basically what they're telling you happened. Now we're going to go into the actual videos of the debate. And then at the very end, they cut out 25 minutes and they actually put a, a screen on the thing so people couldn't hear or see anything. So I've got that 25 minutes on my video, and it's at the end of this one here. So that's basically it. I would simply point out that the guy, uh, Rory, what is his name now? Yeah, Rory Ring. Um, he's the guy who went up and told the moderator, don't let him answer the next question. I watched him. So he caused the triggering of the event, because if I'd been given my minute, nothing would have happened. Right? So here into the videos. Here we go, Sue today. There's a light when I call her a clown? Haley's, you cannot touch me. Go get a cop. A man with a badge and a gun. With a picture on top of me. Get out of here. Get out of here. All right? Excuse me. Those are the rules. So, the point is, yeah, you need a guy with a badge and go get it. 
So in the meantime, I'm going to take my time to answer my phone. The reason I <laughs> Remember now, I watched him as he went up there and whispered in her ear, and I figured, okay, he's telling her to stop me and not let me answer the next question. So I knew that's when it was going to blow up. He triggered it. Climate change is that there was a time when Greenland was called Greenland because it was green and when they grew grapes in Britain. And I have this graph here, I keep showing people, and I keep saying, This is the last thousand years, and when Greenland was green, it was a lot warmer than this little blip now, even if this little blip is warmer than the Ice Age. So, what you're saying is they lied, what they used a the statistical trick to hide the decline since 1998. There's been no discernible warming since 1998. It's a scam, a hoax, they lie. So why and I hate scientists who so, lie. So, 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 so why, why do you think the, the establishment and such is, is saying there is, why do you think it's a hoax? To what, to what need? What? To what need? To I, what need? Are they going to tax you some more? All right. Let's say that's a good enough thing. They found a new way to tax you, even if it doesn't do any good. You have to admit, the Greenland being green back then is an unimpeachable argument. People just sit there and they go into cognitive dissonance and shock because there's nothing they can say. There's the graph. It was warmer back when Greenland was green. Duh. <laughs> Hello? Looking at the wrong button. So the officer came up to me and said, uh, you were asked to leave, you didn't go? I said, yes. He said, well, would you come with me? I said, sure. <laughs> there we go. He has a badge and a gun. <laughs> They still think I'm going to be charged at this point. For reporters, anyway. <laughs> Why do you think you walked in my car? Waiting for the cuffs. You just have to say they let them go. <laughs> Since I've done this walk so many times in my career, I'm probably the most arrested political candidate in history, even if I'm not charged once I'm outside. My poor girlfriend was so freaked out when I was aggressor, <laughs> she left me when sat in the car. Here I come out with two cops, you know. <laughs> she went and talked to the lady. Big Polish accent. T-U-R-M-E-L. My coat has... <laughs> She's telling the cop I help poor people. I'll be good. <laughs> I'm not going back. Let's go. Okay. Gotta get out of here. Nervous. Politics. She doesn't like it. No politics. That gets fixed tomorrow. Yeah, I had a big smash in the window from a piece of wood in an accident. You know, replacing the windshield. I didn't want him to stop me. Hi, we're hooked up with uh, John Termel via Skype today. Uh, where are you? Where are you speaking to us from, John? 
I'm speaking to you from Brantford. I'm known as John the Engineer on the federal ballots. It even says John the Engineer because I convinced them that uh, the world knows me as John the Engineer. So I'm from Brantford, Ontario, but I'm talking about a set of software that can help communities. Now, where? Back when I ran against Sheila Cox. Now, I'm in the Guinness record for running in more elections than anyone else in history. That's what I wanted to get into. You're, you're less no, you're less well known here, probably. I would assume than the uh, the, the main three party candidates. Um, so, well, so less well known to, to get to know you. Uh, <laughs> I've been asking a lot of the candidates why they're running in this election, but for you, that's kind of that's what you do, right? This is. Um, this is what your 91st election? 92nd. 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 Yeah. Wow. Now, why? Yeah, why? What makes you I keep like doing losing? this? Do I like losing? Well, here's the point. When I ran against Sheila Cops in 1996, that's when they announced I was in the Guinness Book of Records. Beat the other guy who had 39 elections when I had 41. But the headline, Super Loser Fails Again. Well, I kept saying at the meetings, I don't need to get elected to succeed. I just need one person with a brain to go pick up the Let's Time Bank software and set it up yourself. Here's how it works. It, single parents log on what nights they can double duty babysit each other's kids. And then they pay each other with one hour bills, even when they're broke. So you bank your time babysitting her kids. And then she banks her time back, babysitting yours. But next thing... Oh. But, okay, but the mechanic will say, well, I need babysitting. I'll take three hours per hour in my shop. And the dentist in Ithaca, New York, for instance, said, I need babysitting. I'll take six hours per hour in my chair. And that's how a support network can grow around a bunch of originally broke people who start a Let's Time Bank database, which lists all the services available and the goods they want to trade, but they use an underground poker chip, time-based money. Okay, Work okay, John, you're running for MPP of Sault Ste. Marie, so people here are looking for, for a representative in, in Queen's Park. What, what do you bring to us? If, so, I mean, I think it's safe to say if people were to elect you, it would be a protest vote. What do, what do we get out of that? Well, I would personally install the Let software in Sault Ste. Marie for every citizen in the right. Fair enough. Out of my constituency office. Promise. I'll take my pay to set up a site where everybody can log on, pledge a thousand hours of labor, and get new Sault Ste. Marie time dollars to trade around. Now, here's the point. Hamilton, one month after the super loser fails again. Headline, creating work by working together. Hamilton self-help group starts up Hamilton Let's. So mission accomplished. I didn't have to get elected in Hamilton to have people set up their own time bank to help poor people. They did it themselves. Now, you want to do it yourself? I'm coming to town for the Tuesday night debate I was invited to. And... I'm looking for someone in the Sioux who is willing to organize and set up the Let's Time Bank site where your poor people can log on and do this. I don't need to be here to do that. I just need to bring you the good news, the good software. Now, should I get elected? Fine. I'll install the software. But after that's done, look, in Argentina, perfect model, okay? It's exactly how it worked back then. In the 80s and 2000, Argentina economy crashed. Now, the government was going to lay off all their workers, and the union said, whoa, 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 whoa. We don't want you to lay anybody off. All right? No layoffs. Here's how. Instead of bringing your bonds to New York to get bills to pay us and then tax it with interest, we'll take 10 peso bond in our pay, as long as we can use it for hydro, taxes, medical, and licensing. HTML. Okay. And it worked. So, using provincial bonds, $10 notes, worked. And Ontario Hydro once issued $25 gift certificates in North York. Would you take a gift certificate that pays 25 bucks in Hydro? Huh? Well, guess what? They could have paid their employees, and they didn't. So, I've explained all of this during the last general election at YouTube when... 
Ontario student vote had questionnaires, two minute answers. So there's 10 minutes where I answered five questions. Just look for student vote termel playlist. And that is what I'm about. It's simple. I want to leave you guys with a working local model. Now, I had mentioned, I forgot to mention here, but when I'm talking about the local model, I should have mentioned municipal because in my Brantford municipal elections, I wanted to pay kids with bus tickets for the empty chairs and the buses to have them do stuff for the city. I called it bus bucks, should have mentioned it. While at the same time talking about installing a provincial model, while when I run in federal elections, installing the software on the Bank of Canada. So you can log on, like PayPal, to the Bank of Canada's website, sign up for a new interest-free credit card, central bank account, cut checks to pay all your mortgages and interest-bearing debts, and after that, all your payments go against the principal, and someday you're out of debt. So the left software can work on a local database, provincial database, I mean, uh, uh, federal database. And I was invited in 2000 to go talk to the United Nations Millennium Assembly on a global UNILET. So UNILET is the United Nations International and Local Employment Trading Software. When I'm in John, Europe, I just gotta, I gotta stop you there. I, I, I was going to mention, when I went to Europe, I paid for 39 nights out of 40 with an IOU for a night back in Canada. That's pretty international. Yeah. We're going to get back to the, the local by-election at hand here. Um, I've been asking all the candidates this, and I'm going to ask you this. Um, the Liberal candidate would say, we, you know, it makes sense. We need to vote for the party that's in power now because we know we can send someone to Queen's Park who's going to be at the table. So it sounds like politics is so crooked that if you're not at the table, you're going to get screwed. Uh, why, why shouldn't we just do that? Why shouldn't everyone just do that? Look, you got a choice between I'll be at the table or I'll be bringing some software. To the table. It's a different <laughs> world. What's she got to offer poor people? I got a proven local employment trading software that if you do your Google research is spread around the world, every time there's a crash, Portugal, Greece, it's always, oops, community currency starting up based on the original LET software in 1984, my baby, which is why I got invited to the UN and they passed the UNILATS resolution. Now you didn't hear about it, not my fault, but <laughs> big stuff has happened and every time, look, Google community currencies, Google underground, Look, if you talk about Bitcoin and these type of um, uh, speculative currencies, look, at ours is based on an hour of labor given. Bitcoin's based on an hour of your computer's labor wasted. It's worth nothing. It's a scam. And when it crashes, they're going to point their fingers at all community currencies. So do you get that? The guys who get the original chips in a Bitcoin system are guys with massive computer power who have their computers, quote, mining, which is wasting time. And once they've wasted enough time mining, the rich guy gets a computer, gets a chip called a Bitcoin. He can now get other people to give him real stuff for. Now, in a let's time bank, you can't get a token without giving some labor for it, some time for it. So an IOU from a let's is backed up by the time that was given to, for you to get it. And an IOU from Bitcoin is backed up by nothing. Wasted computer time as opposed to given and useful human time in a time bank. Now, you look, so basically Bitcoin and all these other speculative coins are a scam. And they're just like any normal stock bubble. Oh, these stocks are going up, they're going up, they're going up, and I can trade them for cash at higher numbers. That's all it is. It's a bubble. And it's based on bad originating practices, okay? Based on wasted computer time instead of useful human time. So that is the scam that's coming up. And when they crash, hey, if their unit of measurement varies, 
Oh, it's worth this much, this much, this much, this much. It's a scam. Real good money is worth something and it stays stable. So that's the story of Bitcoin. Bitcoin. And try and ban us. So, because of the Bitcoin scam being plugged in the media based on rich guys mining with their computers to get the first chips, in a last time bank, you got to put in an hour of labor to get your first chips. And that's the difference. Okay, so, John, I got, I got one more question. We've got time for one more question. I've been asking everybody. I think I know your answer already at this point. But let's say you win, and this is, this is lucky number 92. Um, and you got the first hundred days. What's what's one thing you'd want to accomplish? Well, I first told day. you I'm gonna want to set up a local employment trading system for poor people to log on and start swapping stuff. Look, once you're there and you print up a few one-hour bills, you can call flash flea markets. Everybody show up at the Canadian Tire lot, the empty lot at noon on Sunday with a carload of stuff you want to trade for alternate currency. That's how, when things really get bad, that's how let's help communities have these flash barter sales. You just now with the internet announce we're all meeting here, bring along your stuff and your alternate currency, and we'll do some dealing. When Russia crashed, well, first of all, 750 cities and states issued their own bond bucks and 25,000 corporations. Now, I hadn't mentioned the Argentina story here where the provincial governments had no money and the union said, we're going to take small denomination bonds in our pay if we can use them for hydro taxes, medical and licenses. Or maybe I did. And it worked. McDonald's, Ruble Board, Rubles, Montana Rubles. Everybody issued their own Rubles because there were no others. And they worked. There's nothing wrong with a McDonald's Ruble if everybody else is taking it like a Ruble. Nothing wrong with going to Vegas and taking your Caesar's Palace chip and using it at the Taj. So, it's the same idea. We can run our own chips. We don't need to pay interest to get the feds. Helping entrepreneurs. Thank you, Mr. Turnbull. Well, put more money in the hands of the workers, I heard. Or take less money out of the hands of the workers is another way to do it. This is the graph of Canada's national debt. And you'll notice in 1974, it started to explode. And down there, you have all the interest that was paid over the last 40 years, 30 billion, 40 billion, 40 billion, 50 billion, 60 billion, over a trillion, over a thousand billion paid in interest since something happened in 1974. Here's the Ontario debt. Guess what? Something happened in 1974. Okay, that made the Ontario debt and debt service start to grow. Here's the Quebec debt, 1974. Something happened. Well, you're going to have to go find out because I'm not telling you. you got to go to my site, smartestmanonearth.ca, because I know what happened in 19... Thank you. Turn well. Well... Healthcare, I'll be talking about what Argentina did. Oh, I did in the nineteen eighties and the two thousand crash, the union said you're not gonna lay off any workers. Don't worry about bringing your bond to New York to get bills to pay us, then tax it out with interest and pay back New York. We'll take ten peso bonds in our paychecks, as long as we can use them for hydro, medical, taxes, and licenses. And guess what? They were forced to print up provincial bonds and pay all government employees with provincial bonds. And they could hire as many government employees as they could prevent, I mean, print provincial bonds. And in 2005, Argentina paid off their complete foreign national debt. And it didn't make the news because so much interior action was done that they could leave the other cash spare to pay off their debts. We could do it too. All right, yes. The provincial government is considering 173 recommendations from the workplace review, many of which will be very detrimental to small business owners and could result in substantial job loss and negative growth. Would you support refraining from immediate implement 
implementation workforce review until there is an economic impact assessment completed. To me first. Please start this one off for us, Mr. Termal. I don't have to. If I can manage to persuade the government to start printing up bond bucks like they did in Argentina, bond pesos, we got enough money to raise people's wages and pay them right. But as long as you're going to borrow your money from a bank and pay them interest, you're going to try and keep things short, which is what they do. We have governments that are debtors, okay? The government's a debtor. And you, don't, you cannot imagine how stupid that is to be a debtor when you could print your own chips in the casino. You run the casino, but you let someone else run the chips and loan shark it to you, the owner? What kind of a moron Mr. does Mr. Turnbull? That? We do. Oh, Thank you. sorry, I got more time. Anyway, because... To, when more time to focus on the question, myself, please. The great Canadian gambler, I was known as the professor... Mr. Turnmall. ...all the Atlantic City. And Mr. Turnmall. The, the question is about the workplace review. Please focus on the question. You're saving interact... Thank you. We're moving on to Mr. Kim Potich, please. What, so what do you and your party plan to do to deal with climate change, to help transition to a low carbon economy, and to ensure the protection of the region's natural environment? Now, all the other five parties are in on the global warming bandwagon. You know, we, or we have to stop the climate from changing. <laughs> okay, really, these people think that we should be trying to stop the climate from changing. It's perfect the way it is. <laughs> Isn't that funny? When it was global warming, you could complain and say, no, 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 it's cooling. But now that they claim climate change, anything cooling too. They're right. It changed. So when they went from global warming to climate change, that was a retreat that exposed their lying about global warming. And they got caught. Let's start this. This is the one that gets everybody upset. You know, we don't have to fly it in. We'll have it right there to put the fires out earlier and reduce the cost of the pre-station water near trees. <laughs> Mr. Turnmill. Boy, am I glad to go last. I'm not a nurse sandbox. <laughs> this is a graph over the last thousand years of the temperature. Notice the medieval warm period when Greenland was green and when Britain they had grapes and wineries. Greenland ain't green anymore. What kind of idiots can believe Mr. Turnmill was then? Mr. Turnmill, they had to do. So I said, what kind of idiots could believe it's warmer now than then? And she found that objectionable. She must be one of the idiots. It was lie. Mr. Turnmill, trick to hide the. the As if she's gonna stop me from talking. She's just another piece of noise from the peanut gallery who's trying to stop my presentation to talk about the, what, the tone of my presentation or the whatever, how she feels about my presentation without letting me get on with it, as if she's going to stop me. <laughs> the climate, called Climate Gate, where they used a statistical trick to hide the decline since 1998. And it's not even as warm as the medieval warm period when Greenland was green. So this is what you get with orthodox politics. This is what you get with me, smartestmanonearth.ca. I know about the medieval warm period. You clowns don't. Now, that got a few chuckles, okay? So didn't sound like too many people were upset, right? Mr. Turnmill, that language is not acceptable. <laughs> She's upset. What kind of morons can believe this? She does. <laughs> now, I'm going to stop this now, and I'm going to We are go moving. And Excuse me. That is video. not called for, and I will not accept that. Going to get my video because they cut my mic. And you don't get to hear what, and you won't get to see what happened behind the scenes. So we're going to go to my video now. After 
she decided she's not going to let me answer the question with the others. Things hit the fan. And they now put on this um, insert to cover everything. And they shut off the sound and the audio for 25 minutes. 25 minutes. Which is what they do. We have governments that are debtors, okay? The government's a debtor. And you, you cannot imagine how stupid that is to be a debtor when you could print your own chips in the casino. <laughs> you run the casino, but you let someone else run the chips and loan shark it to you, the owner? What kind of a moron it does that? Not. We do. <laughs> oh, sorry, I got more time. Anyway, the casting. Well, you said I get to introduce myself. I'm John the Engineer Turmel, the great Canadian gambler. I was known as the professor at Taj Mahal in Atlantic City. And I understand how poker chips work. And I want to run my The question poker is about the workplace review. Please focus on the question. Sweetie, if you're saving interest, what more do you need? Don't you get it? It's sticking out of the Thank box, you. an overview. We're moving on to Mr. Kimpotich. I don't want to stay with the slowest person in the room. I'm giving you a warning that that's your first oh, oh. warning. The next time I'm going to have to ask you to leave. Yeah. Oh, come on. Mr. Kimpotich. Uh, thank you. It's a very good question. And, uh, I believe that if you work hard for three jobs, you deserve a decent wage and a decent set of benefits. And it's that simple with me, everyone. Precarious work should not be a future. We need stable long-term work with good wages, benefits, and pensions for our young people. And the Conservatives, they won't fight for workers. They never have. We support a $15 minimum wage. We support that. And we're going to protect the pensioners. Mr. Trimlock. Boy, am I glad to go last. I'm not a nurse sandbox. This is a graph over the last thousand years of the temperature. Notice the medieval warm period when Greenland was green and when Britain they had grapes and wineries. Greenland ain't green anymore. What kind of idiots can believe it's Mr. colder Turner. now than it was then? Mr. All they had to do was lie. Mr. And they Turner. used a trick to hide the decline that, called Climate Gate, where they used a statistical trick to hide the decline since 1998. And it's not even as warm as the medieval warm period when Greenland was green. So, this is what you get with orthodox politics. This is what you get with me, smartestmanonearth.ca. I know about the medieval warm period. You clowns don't. <laughs> Mr. Trimmel, that language is not acceptable. What language? Calling the audience clowns. Well, but sorry, let's our, check out your dictionary. But you want our vote? Frankly, lady, not yours. <laughs> we are. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Excuse me, that is not called for. Whoa, I will not accept on, that behavior. I'm not sure exactly. Political what correctness, is that what's going on here? <laughs> I said clowns. People believe this kind of bull are clowns. I got a science degree. Excuse you me. don't. Excuse me. Getting back to the questions that matter here. Climate gates are hoax. Moving on with Mr. Kupatich, I apologize for the need to develop and enhance our entrepreneurial and innovation ecosystem. Please take this one away, Debbie and Rosa. Hey, I may be a bit distracted over there, but I do my best to stay on task. So. I think that it's absolutely imperative that that is exactly what in fact does happen, is that wherever our local industry is, is paying into the pollutions, that it, it just has to come back into the, the community. It, it, there's just no question about it. It's certainly something that I would completely and totally fight for, and it, it only makes sense. It's the, the same thing with the gas tax. So the gas tax reverts back to your own community and, and, you know, it's specified for infrastructure and that kind of thing. And but um, it puts money in the pockets of Ontarians and it benefits low and middle income lows. It's easier for businesses to, to plan because it's a stepped um, entry and it's been shown to reduce carbon. It's been... I'm sorry, Mr. Trimble, you've lost your opportunity to speak oh, tonight. Isn't that sad? I'm going to have to take my opportunity anyway. We're moving on to... There's a complaint about $30 million 
Excuse me. When I've got this graph here that's showing like that her man for being called yourself. clown, Council Chambers, please. she believes in this graph and she sure. doesn't like when I call her a clown? Sure. And, hey, Rachel, you cannot touch me. Go get a cop, a man, a badge, and a gun. Get your hands off me. Get out of here. Get out of here. All right? Excuse me. Those are the rules. It's so, the point is, yeah, you need a guy with a badge and a gun. Go get it. So, in the meantime, I'm going to take my time to answer until I'm gone. The reason I came here was to talk to you about the Let's Time Banking System. You ever heard of that? Oh, I was single parents go on on what makes the double duty babysit your kids? Pay children with one hour bills. And I was hoping that Sue would start a Let's Time Bank. Because I promised. Can you need to be commercial? When I ran against you in Cops in 96, I said, I don't need to get elected. Nobody I just need one person with a Nobody brain, cares. not you, Nobody to go cares. pick up the left software and do it yourselves. And exactly one month go back to your after the headline, oh. Super Loser Fails Again, because I lost my 41st election, Hamilton <laughs> Self Help Group starts up Hamilton Let's. So Hamilton started a time bank, and I didn't need to get elected to do it. And I was hoping to convince somebody here to start a Let's Time Bank for it's your poor people. people. So I know your heart has been helping poor people. You're a bunch of carpers, right? Setting up a time bank to help poor people swap and barter with each other? No, no, no. You want to give cash, right? Well, anyway, that's my real reason for coming here to tell you about Let's Time Bank. How do you think I get 20 signatures in an hour off the streets in all my elections? I say, I want to talk about the Time Bank that lets the mechanic take three hours per hour because he wants babysitting too. Or the dentist takes six hours per hour because he wants babysitting too. And you end up with a support network around a bunch of broke people ready to babysit for each other. So, I wanted to tell you, go check out the Let's Time Bank software. Hopefully, like in Hamilton, there's one person with a brain who will go pick it up and do it, and we know it ain't her. So, exactly, go check out Student Vote Termel Playlist from the last election, where I tried to explain Let's Time Banking to grade fours. She won't get it, but the grade fours may get it. So, student vote on YouTube, Termel Playlist, explains what I'm about and how to set up a Let's Time Bank without making a decision. So, lucky, if they're not going to let me answer the question, what do you expect me to do until the man with the badge and the gun gets here? But, casting get them. She didn't want to be called a clown for believing in global warming. Do you believe in global warming? Do you believe it's warmer now than five hundred years ago? After, not now. After, bye. Good riddance. You ain't got the smartest man on earth.ca, Buster. I'll talk to you after the cops are here. All right? No, 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 no. I ain't talking to you now. Go away. So anyway, the global warming is going to piss everybody off, right? I tell people who believe that this blip is important about your clown. And I meant it. And he said, you showed disrespect. Well, darn right I showed disrespect. I got a degree in systems engineering. Scored 100% in physics. You didn't. And you're telling me this don't make sense? When the medieval war period had breaks? And had green and green land? How dumb can you be to believe this is true? And this is what the fight's about? She didn't like me calling her a clown about global warming? So, geez, you got small police here. Something else to do in a few minutes. Anyway, so, no, 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 no. Let's time it. Go pick it up. You can do it yourselves. You don't have to be a genius in math like me. Even you can figure it out. Go see the great fours and student vote videos. Even you might get it, lady. No, 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 I can't stop it. I said, let's go. They want a mask. They want a cheap TV in your hand or bed. Oh, my God. 
charged so many times.
Troublemaker. <laughs> 